From a young age, everyone is taught that water is the enemy of fire. But that's kind of where it ends. Everyone's really just taught that, you know, water kills fire, but no one really goes on to explain it further. I guess it's just kind of a universally accepted fact, and I personally didn't really question it until a few years ago. I find it interesting that in all of my years in school and of learning science, that it was never explained to me. I was kind of shocked to realize I didn't know the answer, so when I found out, I went around and asked several of my friends, and about 9 out of 10 didn't know the answer. I was honestly kind of relieved that I found out I wasn't alone in this, but it was also kind of sad at the same time. I should also mention that for various different reasons, water is not suitable to put out all fires, like oil fires or chemical fires. For the sake of this video, I'm only going to be referring to the ones that can be extinguished with water, you know, the common ones like with paper or wood. Anyway, to answer the question of why water kills fire, we first need to talk about the fire triangle. This is something that most people have probably seen, and it's used to illustrate the three major requirements that fire has. So for any fire to occur, we need oxygen, fuel, and heat. In every single case that a fire is extinguished, at least one of these elements is being removed. So in the case that we use water to extinguish a fire, which one of these requirements are we taking away? When asked this question, most people are going to say that it blocks or takes away oxygen, but what it's really doing is it's taking away the heat. So if you're really only interested in the fast and quick answer, well then there you have it, it removes the heat. For me though, that's a pretty superficial answer, and I would like to get into a little bit more detail, and I would also like to explain why I don't think blocking oxygen is a good answer. Fire, and a lot of reactions in general, require something called activation energy. This basically means that a certain amount of energy is required for the reaction to start. To get a lot of reactions going, we often need to put in a little bit of initial energy to break some molecular bonds. Once these bonds are broken, the atoms of the reactants are free to rearrange. In the case of fire, the atoms rearrange and form products that are more stable than the reactants. More stable is just a different way of saying that there's less energy associated with the bonds between the products than the reactants. This difference in energy between the products and the reactants is released to the environment, usually in the form of heat. From this diagram, it's important to notice that the energy that's released is completely different from the activation energy. Even if the reaction overall releases a crazy amount of heat and energy, we still need to start it off by giving it a little kickstart of activation energy. In the case of fire, we're usually reacting some sort of carbon-based fuel with oxygen to form very stable carbon dioxide and water. This conversion from the less stable fuel to the very stable carbon dioxide and water results in the release of energy. The first thing we need to do though to get any fire going is to overcome the activation energy. This activation energy barrier is the main reason why most things don't just burst into flames when they touch air. Once the fire gets started though, it becomes self-sustaining. One fuel molecule reacting with oxygen releases enough energy to cover the activation energy of the molecules around it. So only one molecule needs to react to get multiple molecules around it reacting, and this is one reason why fire can easily get out of control. So now we know what activation energy is, but what does this have to do with extinguishing a fire? If we were somehow able to absorb enough energy that the fire can no longer provide its own activation energy, it will no longer be self-sustaining and it will die out. It might not be immediately obvious, but this is exactly what we're doing with water. Water basically has two major things going for it. A, it's completely non-flammable and B, it takes an insane amount of energy to vaporize it. Water isn't flammable because it's basically one of the final products of combustion, and it simply can't be oxidized further by oxygen. Reacting oxygen in water would only reform oxygen in water, and this reaction is totally non-productive and doesn't happen. 
The boiling point of water is much lower than the temperature of a fire, so when it's put onto one, it immediately starts to boil off. The amount of energy that's required to convert water from a liquid to a vapor is actually surprisingly huge. The temperature of the average wood fire is between 400 and 600 C, but I was surprised to find out that it can ignite at temperatures as low as 150 C. Even though this is surprisingly low, this means that the fire has to maintain at least a temperature of about 150 C to maintain ignition. Or in other words, it needs to reach a temperature of at least 150 C in order to overcome its activation energy. If water is added to this wood fire, it would quickly start absorbing all of the energy and heat around it and converting to steam. The conversion of liquid water to steam takes place at around 100 C and it takes a lot of energy. Because of this, a lot of the heat produced by the fire ends up being diverted into converting the water to steam. Eventually we'll add enough water that it's too much for the fire to boil off. Once we do this, the temperature of the wood or the fuel is going to be 100 C or less, and this is at least 50 C less than the activation temperature. Because the fire is no longer contributing the heat necessary to reach its activation temperature, it pretty much just dies out. So that's basically it. The water brings the temperature of everything it touches down to about 100 C and absorbs a crazy amount of energy in order to be converted to steam. If the fire can't provide enough energy to boil off the water and bring the fuel back up to its activation energy, then the fire will be extinguished. We can pretty easily demonstrate water's ability to absorb heat from fire using just a paper cup, a lighter, and some water. If we were to just try to ignite the paper cup alone using the lighter, it would light up pretty quickly. However, if we fill the paper cup with water and then put a flame to it, it seems pretty resistant to the flame. The water in the paper cup is absorbing the heat from the flame, keeping the paper below 100 C and preventing it from reaching its ignition temperature. Now I want to move on and elaborate a little bit on what I mentioned earlier, and that is why blocking oxygen isn't really a good answer. We mentioned before that wood can ignite at temperatures as low as 150 C, but liquid water isn't going to really exist at temperatures above 100 C. So this means that if we ever have liquid water on a solid fuel like wood, the temperature is 100 C or less, and the fire in that area is likely already extinguished. So as a liquid, it might be blocking oxygen, but it's blocking oxygen from a reaction that's already been shut down. Okay, so maybe liquid water doesn't block oxygen from a fire, but what about when it's steam, you know, vapor above the fire? Logically, if enough steam is produced, maybe we can dilute the air above the fire and reduce how much oxygen is getting to it. Oxygen has a concentration in air of about 21%, but the first question we need to answer is, what's the minimum concentration needed to support a fire? A firefighting website that I found claims that fire needs a minimum concentration of 15% to be maintained, but fires can still smolder at concentrations as low as 3%. This means that steam that's produced from the fire would have to simultaneously displace 30% of the entire air volume above the fire. This would only extinguish the flames though, and the fire would still be smoldering, so to totally extinguish it, we would need to displace at least 90% of the air volume. This seems very unlikely unless the fire is in a very small and enclosed space. On top of this, when water is converted to steam in a fire, it doesn't just go nowhere and, you know, chill out above the fire. Steam is significantly less dense than air, and it will very quickly float up and diffuse away. The likelihood of displacing even just 30% to extinguish the flames is pretty unlikely. Think about when you're boiling water on the stove, you know, the steam rises up, it doesn't just stay in the pot and hang out. Anyway, that's basically it. Fire needs three main things, oxygen, fuel, and heat, and water is simply taking away the heat. If you would like to see more videos like this, make some suggestions in the comments, and if I think it's a good idea, I'll do my best to cover it.